When we're solving a synthetic problem, we want to think about two things. We want to think about functional group, inner conversion, and we want to think about CC bond forming reactions. Now, of course, functional group inner conversion has been the topic of many of our chapters, uh, and there are many good summary pages which show you know the single step inner conversions and you should be familiar with just about all of those um, as far as the cc bond forming reactions go uh, it might be useful to review the many that we have seen thus far of course we can add a grignard to a carbonyl species and depending on if it's an ester or a ketone or an aldehyde we can make a second secondary or tertiary alcohols uh, we could also add other R group nucleophiles to carboxylic acid chlorides with our cuprate reagent. And that will allow us to produce a ketone from the carboxylic acid chloride. And also remember that we can take a nitrile. We can add a Grignard to that. Work that up with mild acid conditions and end up with also a ketone with the Grignard as one of the R groups uh, on that ketone. Um, and so in, in these cases, the functional group is in the same location. So it has not moved uh, while we are adding these carbon, carbon, carbon to carbon bonds. Uh, so there's uh, some other options where they might uh, it might move. So here's one example. We could take an alkyl bromide, add cyanide to that, and we know that that makes a new CC bond. Basically puts the cyanide in the place of the bromine. So that's a very useful reaction that can add a CC bond. It adds one carbon, allows us to do some more chemistry with that cyanide group. Uh, and if we use the same reagent here, we can turn that into a uh, Grignard. We can add CO2, we can work that up with mild acid, and we end up with almost the same thing because we know that there's a one-step sequence that can take nitriles to carboxylic acids. Uh, but in this case, the functional group has moved. And we can see that maybe a little more clearly with some different colors. So if we look at the carbon bearing the leaving group, that's going to be th this carbon and in my starting material, the carbon bearing the leaving group was where the functional group was, but now our functional group is considered to be this nitrile group. The C is where the action is going to happen if we subject this to further reaction. The carbon with the green dot now is basically inert. It's not going to do anything. Same thing with this carbon. Uh, the carbon bearing the carboxylic acid functional group is where the action is going to happen if we decide to take this molecule a bit further. We could also look at another example of functional group moving. And let's look at another generic Grignard and react that with a generic um, epoxide. Work that up with, again, mild acidic conditions. And we're going to end up with something that looks like this. And let me again color my carbon that bears the functional group. So that carbon is uh, the carbon that bared the functional group, the Grignard. That carbon is right here in the product. And you can see that now, not, not only do we move the functional group, but it moves two carbons away. And that is very indicative that we're going to use an epoxide as one of our uh, reagents. So when you see the functional group move two carbons away, you should start thinking an epoxide how can I incorporate that into my starting material so that I can get to the desired product? So let's look at a few examples now. Here we start with bromobenzene, and we're going to, looks like we add a carbon here, because there is no carbon attached to the ring, and then we add this acetate group. And I think we can envision adding the acetate group, making this bond via SN2. And if we use acetate anion as our nucleophile, that should do a nice SN2 
uh, process. So the next question then is, how can I get to this benzylic bromide via this uh, bromobenzene, uh, which requires me to add a carbon? So I can add a carbon to bromobenzene, um, probably via a Grignard, perhaps. What if I turn this into a Grignard? And I can add a single carbon uh, a couple of different ways. We saw on a previous slide, CO2, mild acid workup. We could do that. Or we could add formaldehyde, mild acid workup. So I could have a uh, carboxylic acid as my new functional group, or I could have a benzyl alcohol. And if I look at these, I think I'm closer to my benzyl bromide if I start with this alcohol. I can obviously turn the carboxylic acid into an alcohol, but that's just another step. So let's go with this step, adding formaldehyde to my Grignard to add one carbon. And then I believe probably just HBr will turn my benzyl alcohol into benzyl bromide. There's really nothing else this HBr can do. There are no other alkenes, there are no alcohols. There's nothing else that's going to react with uh, acid like the alcohol would. So I'm, I'm quite safe in using HBr. If you prefer not to use HBr, PBr3, of course, will do the same job. So that's not a big deal. You can use either of those, and that will complete this synthesis here. Let's take a look at this one. It almost appears at first glance that I'm t turning this carbon into a nitrogen. And I really don't know how to do that. So I, I don't think that's going to be the best way to think about this. Uh, there's really no way to take out a carbon here and just replace it with an N, uh, unless we're literally playing with Legos and we can just take it apart and put different pieces back together. We are not playing with Legos, uh, even though I sometimes allude to that. So let's think about a different way of making this amide functional group. We know that we can make an amide from an acid chloride and the appropriate uh, amine. So there's dimethylamine. We could use this acid chloride, or if we wanted to, we could use that carboxylic acid. And we could, of course, take the uh, carboxylic acid and turn it into the acid chloride. That's probably what happens in this case. So let me cross that off. So now, how do I get to that carboxylic acid? Now it's looking like I need to cleave this bond right here. How can I cleave that bond? I need to break some carbons uh, in order to change this carbonyl species into uh, a carboxylic acid derivative. Well, there is one reaction that will do that for us, that will cleave CC bonds next to carbonyls and will leave behind, um, I believe it's an ester, uh, and that is uh, the bayer villiger oxidation reaction. And so if we take, um, remember we use a, in this case we can use a generic peroxy acid, and that's going to add an oxygen between the carbons. So basically I'm going to insert an oxygen into this bond, and the tertiary carbon will migrate faster than the secondary carbon will migrate faster than a primary carbon um, would. So in this case, I am quite safe in putting an oxygen on the left side. So now I have an ester, and I think I can take that right to the carboxylic acid uh, via maybe saponification, if you want, with mild acid workup, or alternatively, probably just mild acid if you wanted to do it that way. So either of these options uh, would work to take my ester to a carboxylic acid. So now I've essentially cleaved this CC bond here. I'm going to lose these three carbons, which isn't ideal. Most time in a synthesis, you don't want to throw away some carbons if you can avoid it, uh, because that can be expensive and inefficient and not very environmentally friendly. But that's what we have to do here. So I'm taking my ester, turning into a carboxylic acid, and somehow I'm going to turn this carboxylic acid into an amide. I'm proposing an acid chloride reacting with the required amine. You could probably get the amine to react with the acid under harsher conditions, um, but it's a little easier to go through this high energy intermediate. In this case, we start with benzene, and it looks like we add two carbons, and the last carbon then will have a ester 
functional group. So in this case, um, we really don't have any functional groups on benzene, but we know how to add them pretty well. We're going to add two carbons and end up with uh, an ester on the end. And two, adding two carbons, uh, sometimes it's a big hint that we might want to use an epoxide. Epoxides result in alcohol functional groups. It's very easy to envision our ester coming from an alcohol functional group via this pathway. So if you have a primary alcohol, at this point in the semester, you should understand that this is just one step away from a carboxylic acid. And once we have a carboxylic acid, according to everything we learned in the carboxylic acid derivative chapter, that's just one step away from an ester, an amide, a carboxylic acid chloride, an anhydride. Uh, and so once we get to this point, it's, it's basically we're done. We just need to turn it into a carboxylic acid and then turn that into an ester. And so we can do that a couple of ways. Uh, ethanol with catalytic, sorry, that should be, let's draw this again here. Ethanol, catalytic H2SO4, that will make the ester. Um, and we know that H2CrO4 in water will allow us to take our primary alcohol to the carboxylic acid. So now the, the question becomes, how do I get a two carbon addition along with an alcohol on the end? That's going to be epoxide ring opening followed by mild acid workup. And I can react a benzene nucleophile with the epoxide. So if we want to add two carbons and end up with an alcohol in the second carbon, typically that means we're making this bond here and we're using a Grignard nucleophile. Now, how do I get benzene to become a Grignard? Uh, that is the first step, FeBr3 and Br2. That adds bromine to the, uh, the ring. And the second step, as we did in the laboratory, simply adding magnesium to get to phenyl Grignard. All right, so here we're going with a simple propyl bromide and we're making this sort of looking complex looking imine. So it's important that we can recognize that we have an imine here, and there's only one way to make imine, so we might as well start with that final reaction. Imines come from the ketone or aldehyde and the appropriately shaped amine. So there I have my imine. Now the question becomes, how do I get this ketone or aldehyde? Um, I think there's a couple of options. I'm gonna say that my three carbons here are probably these three. They could be the three on the other side. As you can see, there's both. There, there are two three carbon R groups here. So I could, I could make this bond, maybe via Grignard, and oxidize the Grignard resulting alcohol to make the ketone, so I could try that. Let's, uh, let's use the blue again. So if I wanted to add these three carbons via a Grignard, I could do that to an aldehyde. Mild acid workup. And I can make this into a Grignard, of course, just with Mg, just like we did in the lab. And then this can react in that manner there. Um, so that's one option. Another option would be to, sorry, I forgot the Br here. Uh, another option would be to take my alkyl bromide and add cyanide to it, adding one of the carbons. And then I know that if I react a Grignard with this nitrile, I can actually create a ketone out of the cyanide carbon. So I can make a ketone here by reacting this with the appropriate Grignard. I have one, two, three, four carbons. One, two, three, four carbons. So I need to add three more. So I just need basically the same Grignard I just made. I actually could make that from my starting material if that was one of the allowed procedures, or I could just buy it. Again, mild acid workup. And I can just come all the way around to this ketone. So I could do cyanide uh, ad green addition, gr addition of the Grignard to the, cyan the nitrile compound, and that gets me to this ketone right here, which I can react with the imine, or the amine, to make the imine. So either of these uh, synthetic pathways, I think, would be just fine uh, to answer this question.
And while I'm thinking about it, let me erase this. We could conceive of a question that looks like that. So if we're going to, to uh, propose maybe going from propyl bromide all the way to this amine, uh, that just involves reductive amination. Sodium cyanoborohydride, uh, which we could, could do as a last step. So it, it is possible, uh, I'm just trying to stress that amines and uh, in this case secondary amines uh, are really the, the same thing. They, they differ by only this one step uh, reductive amination. You can read more about that in the um, uh, in, in the amine chapter, and we're also going to do a reductive amination in our lab class.